and welcome to Mobility Mastery Monday. I am Alicia and this is your weekly source for the best tips and tools for pain relief and feeling unstoppable. And today we're going to talk about a monster topic. I find this really fascinating. And that is why fascial release will not necessarily make you more flexible, although it could, and why being more flexible doesn't necessarily mean your fascia is healthy, and how to achieve both if that's what your goal is. So today is going to be part one. This will be a three-part series. In part one, we're going to talk about the major differences between the two and kind of how they affect one another. And part two, which will come out next week, will be um, how to achieve healthy fascia and increases in flexibility if that's your goal. And part three is going to talk about where they overlap and understanding the distinctions between when fascia restriction is causing uh, something to appear inflexible. It's really important to know the difference. For example, um, a lot of people think their hamstrings are tight when in fact they're not. It's just a low back pain pattern happening and um, they need to release their quads. So really important to understand the distinctions there, but today we're going to talk about the big differences between the two. So a lot of people come into my office and say, you know, can I, will I be able to do the splits after you work on me? I can't tell you how many times I've heard that, and the answer is definitely not. Um, that's not really how it works, but I think there's kind of a, um, an assumption that when you release the fascia or you stretch it out, um, that suddenly you'll have an increase in flexibility. And sometimes this is true, but most of the time it is not. So, um, and conversely, just because you're, let's say, hypermobile or a yogini who can pretzel themselves does not mean your fascia is healthy. In fact, you could be more prone to injury. Um, and it just definitely does not indicate that the, what's in between the bones, let's say, isn't all clumped up in the knots and fascial adhesions that kind of we all have. So what does it mean to be flexible? Well, to have a healthy degree of flexibility, you know, you need to be able to get out of bed in the morning and, you know, reach down to tie your shoes or pick up your kids um, and basically perform everyday tasks. Uh, most of us have a healthy or normal degree of flexibility. Um, to become hypermobile or hyperflexible, you know, we're talking about gymnasts, that's me, um, dancers, uh, you know, anybody who's actually like actively working on their flexibility. And a lot of the time we do this as kids and it stays with us. So I'm hypermobile now as an adult and there's nothing I can do about it. I can't undo all that stretching I did as a gymnast. And uh, there's really not any health benefit to being hypermobile and in fact it can make you more prone to injuries. So we're going to talk about that later. In addition to maybe, you know, the usual assumption of being able to do the splits or reach down and touch your toes being a part of flexibility, um, your joints also need to be flexible. Um, so that would mean, let's say, going into a full squat or uh, being able to do pigeon pose and yoga, that kind of thing. So that means you have flexible joints, which is a little bit different than your muscle fibers being flexible. So here, this is kind of leading us to the main difference here. Um, in order to increase flexibility, um, let's say through the hamstrings, that kind of thing, those hamstring muscle fibers actually have to lengthen linearly in one direction. Now, the difference here is with fascia is that fascia is a crisscrossing matrix um, a global uh, tissue in the body. So it's not linear. Um, so when it shrinks, it shrinks into kind of balls and sticks to itself um, in knots or balls, um, unlike muscle fiber. Now it brings the muscle with it a little bit, but um, so being uh, hyper flexible won't really impact your fascia. Um, it doesn't mean it's healthier or unhealthier um, because those muscle fibers can lengthen through the clumps or lumps of fascia that are in a muscle group. Now, healthy fascia is going to be supple and soft, but also firm. Um, it won't be stuck in knots or balls. It will be well lubricated. It won't be dehydrated and stuck to itself. So, you know, that's kind of the major difference here between um, flexibility and fascia. Unhealthy fascia means it's possibly dehydrated, stuck to itself, could be pulling on joints. Um, and basically shrinking in a global manner, usually into balls. And it's usually unhealthy fascia that is stuck in those balls or dehydrated that leads to injury or all the itises where, you know, maybe it's pulling on a joint, something like that. It's not usually a lack of flexibility, let's say, that would cause an injury. Um, certainly that could be true, but most of the time it's not. It's usually the fascia. So what does all of this mean? Well, 
Muscle fibers uh, have to shrink or lengthen according to their shape, which is linear. If you think about it like a fiber, like a string. So they're either going to lengthen or shrink in a linear manner. <laughs> And the fascia will either ex you know, expand or release or shrink and stick to itself globally in balls. So the overlap here is that when the fascia shrinks, it does pull the muscle fiber with it, but they're still <laughs> in a linear manner. Um, now when the muscle uh, lengthens or shrinks linearly, it doesn't necessarily affect the fascia, which I think is pretty interesting because it is kind of global. So it just kind of stays there around that shrinking um, or expanding muscle fiber. So your fascia will be more likely to uh, impact muscle performance, let's say, or muscle flexibility or anything you're doing with your muscles, uh, whereas the muscle affects the fascia to a lesser degree. So in closing, the healthier our fascia is, the more likely it is we can gain increases in flexibility without injuring ourselves or harming muscles or bones. And the opposite is not true. Um, increases in flexibility will do absolutely nothing for the health of our fascia. It really doesn't uh, influence it that much, if at all, in my opinion. Um, now I'm talking about like going into the splits daily or really you know lengthening your hamstrings with daily stretching if you're a gymnast stuff like that it will not affect your fascia there may be some other types of stretching that would affect it in a beneficial manner but probably not even to that great a degree because fascia needs to be um, expanded or stretched globally and any kind of stretching you do to lengthen muscle fibers are not going to lengthen or expand that uh, fascia in a global manner so the lesson from this really is if you want to uh, release your fascia, you must target it, it according to its nature, which is global. Um, so it needs to be released in a global manner. And if you want to target your flexibility and increase it, that needs to happen in a linear manner. So that's what we're going to talk about in part two is how to achieve fascia release if that's your goal or increases in flexibility if that's your goal or both if you want to do both. Thank you for watching and for the full blog post accompanying this video, you can click the link below and if you liked it, then like it and share it and uh, do stay tuned next week for the following episode on how to achieve flexibility or fascia release. I will see you next time on Mobility Mastery Monday.